This is The Trail from Hope, Chapter 5. Mrs. Johnson was still lying across her now dead husband's body when the three men left, yanked her away. Now, Mrs. Johnson was always a soft spoken woman, but now she was screaming like a mad woman and fighting against the men with all she had. And I wouldn't blame her. I was not sure what the men had planned to do with her, but soon it became apparent. Now, I had first learned about rape when I was reading history books and books about conquerors from long ago. It had never occurred to me that such a thing still happened. Yet, right in front of me, it was appearing that that's what was going to happen to Mrs. Johnson. The nicest woman in the world. The woman that used to watch me when I was a kid and my dad went on long hunting trips. The woman that I knew better than my mother. A woman I loved as a mother. Tears were streaming down my face as the events unraveled in front of me. The three men threw Mrs. Johnson to the ground, two of them holding her arms as the third pulled her dress up and tore her underwear off. I buried my head in the dirt as tears and sobs rolled out of me. I could not stand by while this happened, I thought. I had to do something. Even if I died in the process, I, I had to do something. I had to. Or I couldn't live with myself. I picked my head up and turned towards my father to tell him I was stopping this. Only to find there was no one beside me. Just my father's rifle. My father was gone from where he'd just been seconds before. I looked around confused, then looked back towards the Johnson's house. And there he was. Already about thirty yards across the eighty-yard gap between us and Mrs. Johnson. My father was moving like the wind, and I could not believe the ground he was covering. I raised my rifle, not knowing what I was going to do, when I heard it. The most blood-curling, violent, hate-filled war cry that I had ever heard. It sent shivers up my spine. It was emanating from my father, and to speak true, it scared me a little. My dad was now twenty yards from the men, running at a blistering speed. The men jerked up from their prize, hearing the yell, and started getting up and scrambling for their weapons on the ground and strapped across their backs. I glanced to my side and again saw my father's rifle lying in the dirt. In that moment, I was scared I was going to lose my father, and so I raised my rifle. I leveled it across the log and looked through the sight. The little circle in the sight was bouncing around, and I soon realized it was because I was shaking. Shooting a deer to survive and eat was one thing, but to shoot a person, that was not something I had come across before. Still, I tried to calm myself and look down the iron sights instead. I saw my dad. And so, just aimed to the left of him, picked up one of the men in my sights and pulled the trigger. As soon as I shot, I realized I had not properly aimed as I had thought. My hands were shaking. I was breathing heavily. I had never tried to shoot anyone before. Hunting was about being quiet and stealthy, taking time to aim and controlling your breath. Shooting someone trying to shoot someone else was foreign to me and quite frightening. But at the same time, my dad needed help. One of the men holding down Mrs. Johnson's arm had been the first to his rifle and was already raising his rifle at dad when I chambered another round and fired. I know now I should not have been worried about Dad. Now, my shot was not good, but from a hundred yards away, it should have been an easy kill. Instead, it grazed the man's arm. It was a futile effort by me because a split second later, before the man could react to my bullet, my father's tomahawk found his chest and dropped him. Now, I say dropped him, but it... But at the time, the first man was falling before I could do anything. Dad pulled his pistol and fired four shots. The two remaining men fell, and I saw my father run up to them, throw their weapons away, and put his boots to them for what must have been a full minute. He then calmly walked over to Mrs. Johnson, picked her up, and carried her to the shed. Now I lay there watching and waiting, not knowing what to do, but when one of the men moved up and started crawling towards one of his guns, I sprang up and started running and yelling. I don't know if I was yelling anything coherent, but just yelling. But the man had just stopped for a second, then continued crawling towards his gun. On the run at full sprint, I took a shot at him. I knew it was not going to hit him. I just wanted to scare him, and it worked. 
The man lay where he was with his arms up until I got to him. I was panting from a long sprint, nervous, unsure of what to do next. But I kept my rifle pointed at him and the other man that was writhing on the ground. Then when I saw what the four shots that had put out had done, both men were trying to put pressure on their legs around their knees to keep from bleeding out. The blood was slowly coming from around their hands and through their fingers. They also let me know how much it hurt with their agonizing grunts and yells. I didn't know what to do and was a little on edge. So much so that when Dad walked out of the shed, I raised my rifle and aimed right at his head. My sights were only there for a second before I realized what I was doing and lowered my rifle. I had so many things running through my head. So much stuff. Yet all I could say was, Dad. He looked at me with a sullen face and replied, Daughter. We stood there looking at each other for a while. Go look after Mrs. Johnson and calm her. I did not argue. I ran to the shed and went inside. The last 30 seconds had been a whirlwind of feelings that I had never experienced before, and I thought going into the shed would calm my nerves. It did not. There on the floor of the small shed lay Mrs. Johnson. I knelt beside her and brought her head up to hold in my arms. She started to sob, and I couldn't do anything but hold her and try to comfort her. I didn't know if I should say anything to try and comfort her. I was scared and so said nothing. I wanted to say something but didn't get the chance to even think about it because of the sounds that came from outside. From outside the shed came what sounded like a wounded animal being torn apart. The shrieks and cries were frightening. I laid down next to Mrs. Johnson and put my arm around her to comfort her, but also tried to cover her ears with my hands. After a few minutes, the screams stopped and a final gurgling noise that sounded like someone was choking and couldn't catch a breath stopped. After that, there was silence for a couple of seconds. Then the terrified voice of a man could be heard begging in between sobs. What he had just watched scared him, and his cackling voice and sobs and sniffles alluded to as much. Then the screams started all over again. When the final wheezing breaths of the second man had stopped, all was quiet. A moment later, the shed door opened and my father appeared. I looked at him with tears in my eyes while still holding Mrs. Johnson. I looked down at her and realized she was no longer crying. I looked to my dad and he walked over and gently pushed me away. I looked at Mrs. Johnson lying on her back. I looked at her and then at him. She was no longer crying. She was not moving. Her eyes were slightly open, looking up at the roof of the shed, but not looking at anything. Dad reached up and slowly closed her eyes. That's when I broke down. <laughs>